Ain't but one thing we did wrong Stayed in the wilderness too long Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Tonight our topic is uh, the message and movement. So pleased to have my friend Norm Merrifield with us. He is the co-chair of our Education Curriculum Development Committee. So we're going to going to examine uh, <clears throat> from an expert's lens how the music of the movement of, of not only civil rights but of the overcoming of struggles of people of color as we transition from our home countries to uh, multiple locations. First to my right is Dr. Valerie Cordero, and and next to her is uh, a brother that I have thank thankful to Henry and, and Crystal and, and the museum uh, for getting to know very well, and that's Eric Dozier. Uh, when we talk about the music of the civil rights movement, what what uh, you know, Dr. King said that human salvation lies in the hands of the creatively maladjusted. Hmm. And you know when I when I first heard that quote, it was uh, and I, I began to kind of correlate that sentiment with uh, my exploration of African American sacred music. I realized that that was a way that we creatively maladjusted ourselves to our situation, hmm. uh, and that the whole body of African American poetry, African American music dance is, 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 is an expression uh, and a very powerful creative, uh, uh, creative response to oppression. And so when you think about the music, you know, it, it's hard to separate the music from the, from the uh, and when I say movement in this sense, I mean actual movement. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't you don't really, if, if you're singing, you're moving, and if you're moving, you're kind of singing. And I noticed that about my, about my folks when I was growing up, too, is we would, we sang all the time. Um, Dr. Cordero, how do you interpret the message in keeping your eyes on the prize? Right, so it, it has a unifying effect mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the, the movement and on those who are participating in the movement. And again, you see that throughout uh, throughout the history of African people uh, yeah. who have been part of the transatlantic slave trade, using music as a, as a unifier, using music as a, a way of, of keeping community together. Mm -hmm. As we think about the civil rights movement, Eric, what are some of the, the pieces that you think about um, that were transformational moments? Mm -hmm that really allowed us to not only sing that song, but also celebrate? I, I, can, I can mention one that, that, uh, that happened in Nashville. It was an honor for me to sit on a panel with uh, Dr. Rip Patton, who was actually one of the uh, original Freedom Riders from Nashville. And he was telling me about how when, uh, when, the, when the kids started with the Freedom Rides, and I think they were, they started in D.C. and they were going to come across the South and they got stopped halfway and they, they called uh, some, some young people in Nashville and said, well, we can't, we can't go any further. Kids in Nashville said, well, we'll, we'll take it from here. Hmm. You know, Dr. Patton and uh, I think uh, Diane Nash and, a, and a, number of, a number of folks, and they were the ones that took it from Nashville and went deeper down into the south mississippi areas like that when we look at the civil rights movement you know we we most of the time we get this this kind of bird's eye view and we see the the big name leaders and we see king and you know we see all of these folks however you know there were a lot of young people involved in that movement so and i yeah. think that brings up a really uh, salient point because i think there became a somewhere in time where we stopped listening to kids. Yeah. And we got into the practice of just talking at kids. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'd like to explore a lot what you said about like kind of relationships between music and, a, and the movement. Mm -hmm. Then and now, I feel like, you know, music did play a huge part. It's, it's one of the things that is a unifier and a communicator uh, and played a huge role in what happened in the 60s. But I, and, as with Black Lives Matter, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. What role do you see music playing? Like, what would be the soundtrack to this movement that's 
happening now, mm. in your opinion? Uh, there's a lot of creative energy happening w uh, in kind of s with spoken word, a lot of spoken word artists, a lot of hip hop artists, particularly Muslim hip hop artists, Muslim female hip hop artists. Mm are doing some really creative revolutionary things. Some mainstream artists as well, like John Legend, who has been kind of becoming more outspoken uh, in his, uh, 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 in regards to how he uses his music. And, um, you know, the president has hosted several things where he's had, uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> uh, Nas and yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, Janelle Monae. Yeah, Janelle, Janelle Monae has, has done some things. from the beginning. She's always kind of been a mm -hmm. been been a really progressive in in the and thing. Killer Mike has also come out as kind oh, of a, oh yeah, well he voice. yeah yeah whether and he, although he sometimes gets into yeah he, disagreements he, yeah, with he, people. <laughs> Killer Mike has been doing well, and then uh, also uh, India Ari mm -hmm. uh, is okay. is like when you when you th like from the very beginning when her music came out, her music was always. very very positive, it, uh, always uh, um, um, really spoke of, of, of uh, the, the power of women, mm -hmm. uh, always honored the past and artists that, that contributed to her uh, creative legacy. You know, she always acknowledged that. How do we create a wedge between the excess of capitalism <laughs> and the movement. So I think that's a piece that kids weren't necessarily looking at or when we were uh, you know, in bondage or when we were fighting for our rights, we weren't necessarily looking at it from the capitalistic view of like, no, this the way to get out of this situation is to earn money mm -hmm. and to earn a mass amount of money. Mm -hmm. So how do we take that rich American thread of capitalism out of their schemas so that we can focus on um, more prominent community building instead of doing whatever it takes for the dollar. I, I honestly think this generation, because I'm part of it, <laughs> is a lot less prioritizing money than our parents were. Mm -hmm. I think, if anything, we, we are seeing the pits of capitalism. We are mm -hmm. in the throes of no retirement, no high student debt, ridiculous like stock markets we are i think we're experiencing a, a lot of the lows of capitalism and i know and i'm aware of a lot of people that are speaking out against the ways that capitalism affects our um affects our humanity just mm -hmm. in large we are amazed but not amused by all the things you said that you do mm -hmm. Much concerned, but not involved with decisions that are made by you. And we are sick and tired of hearing your song, telling how you are going to change right from wrong. And if you really want to hear our views, you haven't done nothing. Right. You know, I think about that. Or, you know, I think about, you know, uh, you know, like I said, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's our duty to win. It's our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We've got nothing to lose but our chain. Thank you, yeah. Thank you for coming yeah. to Simpson State. Yeah, give it up for Eric Goja, please, and Dr. Dallas Cabello. Doctor, doctor. So good to meet you.